Hello everybody, this is uh, Lord Boltar yet again. Um, the video that you're, that you're currently viewing uh, right now is just a little silly test video that I, uh, I made earlier. Um, a lot of people still ask me about surface mount uh, soldering and just kind of working with surface mount technology and you know they, they always kind of, uh, a lot of people are still baffled by the fact that I say I can work quicker, much quicker, uh, with uh, surface, surface mount stuff than I can with uh, anything that's through hull. So um, this is just a little video here showing uh, some of the techniques that I use and uh, um, you know maybe to give other people an idea of really how fast and how efficient you can work. Had to work around some limitations though, uh, still trying to get used to the camera being in my way as it still slightly impairs the uh, your my, my visual cues here and uh, you know kind of my physical freedom but I, I think I do all right um, so really what you're seeing here is uh, you know I sol I soldered that um, TSOP 14 package there um, and now I've applied flux to the board and I've soldered soldered to uh, one side of the uh, input pads here for the uh, for these uh, passive components this is all uh, 0805 stuff here um, so I, I, this is really a two, I do this when I'm doing anything by hand, it's, it's always a, a two, a two phase process. Uh, first I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll apply some, uh, li no clean liquid, uh, flux to the, uh, to the assailant. And then I'll do the, uh, just a, just attacking method here to, uh, position the, uh, components, uh, to the landings. Uh, so I get, um, good orientation and, and good placement on the pad uh, so that's that's the first step and so I'm just finishing that off right now with the couple cap on the chroma input and I think I turned the board around here but let's see what I do it's been so long I, I don't remember sexually so yeah I'm just going to probably apply uh, let's see if I do it like a champion yeah just a uh, just another wave of uh, no clean. It's it's really just one drop, but because this is such a tight shot, it looks like I'm I'm flooding the board, which I guess I kind of am, but that's that's perfectly fine. And um, the problem with rosin core solder is that w once it activates at a certain temperature, uh, it it you know it it loses its performance or the, its performance um, suffers. So by the time that it reaches temperature, uh, the temperature of uh, activation. Where it becomes kind of plastic uh, with the solder, uh, you've already burned it up. So I always use no clean to absolutely promote excellent joining. And here you see me going back on the first joints that I made. This is just another tacking process that I do. It takes a couple of seconds and it just absolutely ensures that I have great solid fillets um, on uh, that side of the board. So here we go again, and uh, it's the same process. It's just, uh, you know, you. You sweep across and you uh, pretend uh, the pads here. All these, you know, I, I made all of these libraries. If you're going to make a board, if you're interested in doing anything like this, you know, if you know these are these are fairly small. I mean, they're not too small. They're they're about the size of, of I guess of, of of a wave library for um, an application that would be wave soldered. But uh, keep that in mind. Uh, you know, the the size of the, what kind of library you're using uh, if you do anything surface mount. But as you can see, this all goes really really fast and. If you use good technique and uh, you know you have a good performing uh, no clean, uh, you know you can get really nice, uh, uh, beautiful uh, fillets here with your soldering. I always hate seeing uh, boards that are hand soldered, and you see those large balls of, of excess solder on each of the pads. Uh, it's just you know it's amateur stuff, and it, it, that can be corrected uh, fairly very quickly if uh, you know people just learn some. Some really basic concepts here, just like I'm doing. I mean, it's it's this is very simple. And if I didn't have a camera here, uh, and if I wasn't fighting that and all the other obstacles, this would actually even go a lot faster. But um, here again, uh, it's another passive no clean, and we're just we're attacking the other side. And I had problems um, because of the angle of the of the soldering iron. I wasn't making uh, a good thermal contact between the iron, the pad, and the end of the uh, of those uh, 0805, so you can see that I actually have a, I have a, I have a resistor here that tombstones. But this is this is a good moment of exercise because I'll, I'll show you how to quickly correct that. Um, the the angle of your soldering iron is just as important as where you place it. It's how you place it. So I just take the component off and, 
you know, reestablish its position in my tweezers. And I just line it up, and it looks really messy and dirty right now. But you'll see that that the the alignment there is good. But we'll we'll clean that uh we'll clean those joints up on both sides. I'm just going to carry on with the uh, with the rest here, and I apply a little more flux because I want to pay a little attention, a little more attention to these. Finishing off, kind of cut cut the uh, top of the frame off, uh, or the 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 top of the board gets cut off uh, out of frame. But I mean, it's you know you, you've seen this seven or eight times now. So I'm going to go back and do this. This is really the second process. Once you position everything, I'm going to make sure that we have a good we have good uh, wetted fillets uh, on all the joints here. You know, solder works based on the principle of capillary action and and surface tension, and uh, I try to honor that. So this is just the solder strap I have for the 7374 where you can choose to have the low order filter enabled or disabled. By default uh, it's it's disabled. Um, you, like, just like you saw you can easily switch that uh, strap to the on position but here's the uh, here's the 220 microfarad uh, cap the DC uh, blocker for the um, uh, Luma output this board also does. Um, it has the passive components necessary to uh, drive S video off of the uh, sRGB encoder on the one chip, or the more most notably the SNES Mini. So I'm just uh, I grab a joint there, get a nice fill, uh, rotate the board and orient it so my soldering iron is on the same side as the joint. Introduce a little solder there. Eh, again, just a really nice joint. And so I think at this point, what I like to use is a combination of 96% uh, isopropyl and distilled water without any contaminants. And I'll just bathe the board. And with a, a little abrasive force, uh, I'll uh, break up that no clean and I thoroughly clean the board. It is no clean. This is a really, really uh, high performing no clean flux that I use. And it does leave a uh, residue. I don't like that. And I certainly don't like buying boards that have any sort of uh, gunky no clean so I always uh, I always uh, you know make uh, make effort to clean that off uh, in a very safe safe way it's a, it's a very safe solvent so I'm just uh, pre tanning these I test these boards but I think the customers you know people who buy these they're <clears throat> they uh, they uh, you know that that's kind of well received I think they appreciate that so I just take the board and here here's the camera again I'm I'm getting I'm trying to get better about this not bumping and shaking it but uh I clean the board off and uh, wipe it down, and, and that's it. That's the uh, that's the whole thing. So hopefully this will give you guys some uh, some insight on how I do this, and it might help you.